Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the odd scenario of people asking for money and being accepted and welcomed into our community, and then someone like PewDiePie or Unsleeved Media who actually enjoy the game and spend their own money. So I'm pretty sure that PewDiePie has at least played MTG Arena more than MTG Mayfair, uh, all of these special mythic invitational players, of course, uh, who promote our product. And yet he is being attacked by some in the magic community, some popular people in the magic community. And all, all it takes is for you to see the tactics at work, which is simply, so PewDiePie plays MTG, dot, dot, dot. And you know that your audience is going to attack him. And that is exactly what the audience does. And therefore, PewDiePie may or may not want to play MTG Arena anymore because he can play any game he wants, any game at all. And the game would be happy. Like, if you were a developer for a game, wouldn't you be happy? At least you would make more sales. At least you would have more people. So you would have more revenue, more subscribers, more views. You would um, target the exact demographic that I think Magic the Gathering should be targeting, which is younger males, uh, predominantly white. Um, that is the fact. So there's a lot of times that you can say, oh, I feel, I feel like this. I feel like 40% of women, uh, of Magic players are women. I feel that way. But that's not fact. That's just your feelings. And I'm sorry that your feelings get hurt all the time. But fact is fact. Fact is this guy has 85 million subscribers. Fact is he can make one video about MTG Arena and drive more traffic than Tolarian Community College can do in his whole life. That is fact. Based on views, based on increased, I mean, when's the last time somebody made a MTG Arena video and got two to four million views on it? I don't remember that ever happening. So why would we want to uh, include exclude him and exclude maybe on Sleeve Media and some others, but include cheaters, predators, uh, who are judges, of course, because that's what predators do, and other people um, in our community, which I can go on and say that there's some very, very um, interesting members. Like, we exclude Jeff Hoogland, but we take in M MTG Mayfer, who I didn't know who she was until recently, but um, may or may not have interest in MTG Arena, but whatever. So let's take these stats. 40% women play Magic. This is a stat that Merrill, who is the same guy who tried to vote the number one cheater into the Magic Hall of Fame, has given us. And until he give, gives us new stats, that's what we have to go off. Is this actually true, or is it maybe that 40% of people identify as women, and that would make more sense to me? Um, I think that would actually solve the question. I'm trying to solve these questions so I can make a assessment at the very end why our community has become less accepting, even though on its surface we are portrayed as more accepting, right? That we're more accepting for all individuals when I can tell you we are far less accepting than when I play Magic. So back in my day, we played Magic and we would sit at the cafeteria in middle school and whether or not you were friends with someone, as long as you had a Magic deck, you could join. In fact, if you just sat and then looked at your cards, people would ask you to join to play them. And that was what Magic was. If you had the deck, you had any interest in game, you could play at the cafeteria. And then you would get invited to sleepovers, parties, birthday parties. And even if you hated that other dude's gut, guts, you were in it together. It was you guys were the Magic community. And then in middle school, we had the chess club, and then we just played Magic in the chess club. We played at the library. It was very nerdy, incredibly nerdy. But that's what we did. We had a math teacher who was really into it, and that's how I grew up. We had a Wizard of the Coast store. I remember this, the Wizard of the Coast store actually had terrible Magic tournaments, but really good Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments. I don't know what the 
what uh, how that happened, but the Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments were really good because Yu-Gi-Oh just started back in the day when they opened the store. And that's why it was like the heyday of Yu-Gi-Oh! And it had the anime show. And of course, you know, Turnout was fantastic at um, when it was the Blue Eyes White Dragon set. I remember buying lots and lots of that set. But more to the accepting nature of Magic. Magic, when I grew up, was very accepting. If you had a deck, it didn't matter that you were... Uh, who, What you looked like, what you dressed like, what you smelled like. I mean, you wore the same hoodie for five years, it's okay. Come join us and play a game of Magic. Now, the kids in our school would, of course, bully us, and uh, our gym teacher would actually make ridiculous remarks about our... Okay, so our English teacher, our seventh-grade English teacher, um, I had a friend, his name was Brandon. He probably has the best foil collection. They would... C was very religious, and these... C assume assume that magic was like uh summoning like devils and demons which doesn't help when you have demonic attorney uh attorney um all types of demons in the pictures right of the original cards which we were playing with and yeah demonic tutor obviously was a very common powerful card i think even a little kid realizes hey i can pick any card i want in my deck yeah this is a good card so everyone ran for Demonic Tutors, Hypnotic Specters, probably not the most um, great looking card for a religious 7th grade English teacher. And she would take our decks and throw it in the recycle bin. And then after school would end, uh, we had this other guy, his name was Ravi, and he would go back into the recycle bin to take the cards and hand it back to everyone. And that's the way it would work because he had like after school, like Olympics or academics, and then everyone would get their cards back to be thrown out the next day. We used, we didn't have sleeves. We didn't have binders. We had rubber bands and sandwich bags. And I mean, that was magic. We had the, the value, how we did trades was we used Inquest magazine that came out maybe eight months ago. And that's how we valued everything. And most times like, in the very beginning in elementary school, we didn't know because it was Portal, it was uh, Beta, it was Unlimited, Revised. We had no concept what was a rare even. Like, we didn't know. Like, what was a rare, what was not a rare? Um, and of course, that's how I grew up with magic. I grew up with magic as a very fun and accepting hobby. Um, it's an accepting hobby for those who don't belong, for those outcasts who... And that's the way FNM is. Um, FNM, you can go anywhere you. I can move. Let's say your parents move you from San Francisco to the middle of nowhere, Texas. Just find your local magic store, make friends with them, and there will be kids your same age when I grew up, not just, you know, random adults who played magic when they were children. But there would actually be a lots of children playing magic in Yu-Gi-Oh at the time because it just came out. Pokemon was really popular as well. Um, I remember Urza Saga. I had the choice of buying Urza Saga or Pokemon uh, First Edition, the first uh, base set. Uh, they came out at the same time. Now, obviously, what I should have done was I should have bought as much of both as I could, but I was too busy buying <laughs> Retro Packs, which was uh, Fallen Empires and the Dark. I wish I had gone with the Dark. That would have been really good decision but i bought like half 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 fallen empires because i was really intrigued by the uh the uh fallen me mechanic where like you have spore tokens and they're i don't know i thought that was very powerful that you could create that you had to accumulate all these spore tokens and then eventually you get a valid so magic was super accepting back then and i'm sure felix played he's probably the same age as me um, when magic was accepting, and it was a good, good way to identify who your fellow nerds are. Now, you know, all I see is woman magic, and uh, hot females in magic, and, you know, like, I look at professors in magic, and, like, wedges in magic, and, you know, donate to me, donate to me, donate to me. Um, it's so different. It's like... It doesn't make sense to me. Um, it, it's really confusing to me how we got to this point where uh, one of the most popular magic channels and can, is getting paid. So imagine, I, I took an example previously. 
But imagine that we're running a convention and we invited Lindsay Lohan to our convention. We paid for her plane ticket. We paid for her boyfriend's plane ticket. We paid for their meal to give them a stipend. We paid for their hotel. We advertised that Lindsay will be at this event via Facebook ads. And then Lindsay is too drunk. Um, and then, you know, Lindsay goes to the event on Friday. The event starts on Saturday, Sunday, and all these people are waiting to, you know, see Lindsay, take pictures with her, get autographs, uh, maybe pay some money to get, you know, a signed card that's never sent. I guess it would be, I mean, it would be in person. Maybe a $5 for a signed photo you know, at the event by a professional photographer. Who knows? But then Lindsay gets drunk and injures herself and cannot show up to the event. Would we be upset or would we donate Lindsay $5,000 to send her to rehab? And then we had to do a fundraiser at the event. And then the fundraiser was done by Lindsay's sister who, and then Lindsay had no idea the fundraiser was being run, but tweeted about it all the time and made YouTube videos about it. Um, so back then, then we don't raise $90,000 to send Lindsay to the uh, rehab center, which then she moved to the UK and said, blank you, I'm gone. We can accept this behavior, but we cannot accept PewDiePie, who's helping our game and bringing exactly the demographic that I would assume that we need. It's not a genius to figure out why magic is so popular. Right or who magic is popular with. I know on social media, it seems that every other person is a female magic player. And I know on Twitter, like every person is a female magic player. And on Reddit, everyone's a female magic player. But like, really? Like, come on, guys. Like, come on. Like, does this make sense to anyone? And back to the whole donation thing, it's, it's quite fascinating because... I've always said, yeah, takers and then you have givers. Back when I played Magic, we used to lend decks. There was a format and we trusted each other. There was multiple formats where you played with your opponent's decks. And we didn't invent these formats. It was Inquest Magazine that told us. Um, we would switch decks all the time. There was one format where we would bid on everyone else's deck and then we would play it. And no one said, oh, you stole my card. No, you took it. No, it was just assumed that, hey, we're in this together. This is what we do is another format called emperor and we would just change everyone's decks all the time and so instead of having to buy all these different decks we would just play random decks i would play your deck you would play my deck and i would play that one other dude's deck and no one had any problem with stealing lying or cheating because why what is there to if you cheated what are you, are you trying to win there's nothing to win there's no prize there's no donations there's no patreon that you can ask for hey guys donate me a dollar like, I can't even imagine that. Like, if you said that when we were little kids, we'd say, F you. Get out of here. Like, what are you talking about? Donate a dollar because I injured myself and I'm a magic player. MTJ community is best. We said, get out of here. Like, what are you? Like, so whenever I have any, like, ethical problems um, in terms of my life or whatever, I always go back to when I'm a little kid and say, hmm, if I was a little kid and this was the knowledge and I knew about X, Y, and Z, and I made decision A, would that be ethical? And that's the same way I can say about magic. Magic was such a big part of my life, and I'm sure it was for many people like on Sleep Media and PewDiePie, but it has been, it's been changed into something that doesn't make sense because every other day it's about women in magic or diversity in magic. And you can see from the cards, you can see from the people they promote, the people... MTG Mayfair is a perfect example of um, what's happening where Jeff Hoogland, Caleb wasn't invited until... So Caleb replaced MTG Mayfair. So MTG Mayfair was ranked above Caleb and Caleb is probably the most popular MTG Arena streamer. Yet someone who streamed 33 hours was invited before him and I would argue and I would say Wizard of Coast has actually said so in a tweet that that was because she was a female magic player i get it things have changed i'm a dinosaur you know i'm from the relics of the odin age and i have the collection to prove it and luckily for me i have so many reserve list cards because of the odin age and i don't need to worry about all the crappy uh standard cards that rotate out and lose 95 percent of their value because i already have so much reserve list cards 
So that is one benefit of being a relic of a antiquated dinosaur. But I really don't get it. Like, when did we start begging for money? Like, when did we start that? Like, it wasn't... So if you play Magic, hey, you need some cards? Hey, you can have them. You want to play my deck? Yeah, go for it. Now, it's not even about Magic anymore. So tell me how much of the mana sources donations came from magic players and how much of it did not come from magic players like do you think the mana source has actual friends who are like in real life friends do you think he actually has people who would donate him ninety thousand dollars the answer is no only the magic community would be in my opinion dumb enough to do so it is really dumb because you're encouraging terrible behavior you're rewarding behavior that will tell other people you should behave this way too it's okay you don't need health insurance you can just get donations and the same can be said about tolarian it's okay you don't need a job hey you don't like your job quit your job tolarian wasn't even the first person to do that way before there was an article in star city games which i have shown you where the guy doesn't want to he works as a uh, I think a bus boy or something. He works in, and his boss wanted him to take, you know, work during holidays because it's really busy during holidays. And then he said, "No, I can't work. I'm too good to work this regular job. I'm a magic player." I didn't think that way when I was young. I thought magic was a cool hobby and it made me lots of really great lifetime friends. But I never thought that like I should not have a job. And my main job should be a magic player, you know, and nobody in my play group thought that. And they're all professionals. We grew up OK. We have great jobs. I mean, engineers, most of them turn out to be engineers, uh, which is something else that I had to say. It's it used to be that if you were a magic player, you would be engineer, finance, uh, start your own business, a business owner. You would be successful because you were nerdy. And that nerdiness is what attracted you to magic, and the magic attracted you to other nerds. And you would have a really, really good base of people who understood who you are because they're the same. And now we've been so focused on diversity, a diversity, that look at our community. We are the most we are the most toxic what the most toxic people or the people talking about diversity all the time. That's in my opinion. So anyway, uh, if you want some less salt and you want to help me take over, uh, my goal for 2019 is to be placed on the top 100 social media people. Um, so I need my YouTube channel, uh, my other YouTube channel, to grow as big as it can. Otherwise, I will be left off the list again. I have been left off this list since 2015, which doesn't make any sense because they invited me to speak. And I met the guy who made the list. His name is Eric. And I asked him about it, and then he just was like very snooty. I want to rub his nose into it. I know that sounds bad, but I'm a lion. Well, I, actually, over there, I'm a tiger, but you get it. Predatory cat. Not to be confused with predatory judge, because no one wants to be a predatory judge. Unless, okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm going to keep that joke. <laughs> Bye.